Oh, I think I skipped it in. Yeah, our private may need a new name. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brett from PaperCartridges.com. The new long-ranging rifle musket was the most common Civil War infantry weapon, but it was rarely used beyond 150 yards. This is because the slow velocity and dramatically curved flight of the bullet required the soldier to be more than just a good, skilled marksman. He had to know how to accurately estimate the range. I agree with historians like Patty Griffith and Earl Hess, who have argued that Civil War soldiers were simply unable to unleash the theoretical potential of the rifle musket because they received virtually no training on range estimation or shooting practice. This is in sharp contrast to the professional European armies where schools of musketry had been established and soldiers were trained and rigorously tested in range estimation and other shooting fundamentals. While I disagree with some of Dr. Hess's conclusions, there's a great summary paragraph in his recent book on the rifle musket in the Civil War. For a host of reasons, Civil War soldiers simply weren't trained how to use their rifles, and the parabolic trajectory of the bullet meant that even expert shots were unable to hit anything beyond 150 yards or so. So what do we mean by parabolic trajectory? In any firearm, the moment the bullet leaves the barrel, gravity begins to pull it down to earth. Gravity is the inexorable tyrant of the projectile. In order to hit a target at longer distances, the barrel has to be elevated, which keeps the bullet up in the air long enough to cover the distance to the target before gravity can pull it down. Speaking of the air, the enormous friction of the atmosphere slows the bullet the moment it leaves the muzzle, and the trajectory only gets more and more sharply curved the farther it goes. For example, to hit an enemy soldier at 600 yards required so much elevation of the barrel that the bullet would reach a height 40 feet above the ground before it started to come back down. As the bullet came down to earth, the distance it covered within the height of a soldier was called the dangerous space. The lack of training shocked European observers, and one British musketry instructor aptly noted that the lack of training virtually canceled out any benefit of the beautiful rifles issued to Union troops. The British weren't the only ones to recognize a problem. The U.S. Army tried to implement a system of rifle training, and in early 1862, several prominent Union generals bluntly said, it is much needed. The manual confessed that there was nothing new in it, and it was merely a copy of French and British manuals. By and large, it was completely ignored for the duration of the Civil War. So this is Private Snuffy. We asked the company for volunteers, and he was the first one to raise his hand. So we're gonna have him stand out here at 300 yards and we're going to shoot at him, but it's okay, Private Snuffy, we're not actually gonna hit you because we're gonna shoot with the sights on the rifle set for 400 yards and set for 200 yards. So we know, based on the trajectory of these rounds, that he's perfectly safe standing here at 300 yards. So you got nothing to worry about, Private Snuffy. We'll be right back, hang out here, and then there'll be an extra piece of uh, hardtack in it for you. So first things first, we made sure that the rifle was actually dialed in for 300 yards. And for this test, Joe used his original Model 1855 rifle with the correctly sized bullet and powder charge. Here you can clearly see his sights set to the 300 yard mark. So between the gunshots in the distance and my terrible microphone, this audio was useless. So I'm just going to pause the video and voice over from here. As you can see, Joe shot a fantastic 300-yard group, 
and this unsurprisingly just proves that the rifle sights are correctly calibrated using this historic bullet and powder. So Private Snuffy says he's ready. So we're going to shoot now. We're going to start with the sights at 400. I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but that's the top of this hump. So the sights all the way at the top, 400 yards. I want to make sure I get all the powder because if I don't get all the powder that will lower the trajectory and I just might hit Private Snuffy. Yeah, I hate Burton bullets. That one rammed really hard. Might edit that out. Right at, uh, right at Private Snuffy's waist belt. Right over. Way over? Right over the top. Right over the top? Yep. Wow. Got a brush? Yeah. Yeah. Pause it and we'll brush it up. Seriously though, the, the Burton Mini, it it just it's just awful. So the last one sailed right over? Yep. Last one sailed right over, yeah. about a foot high. That's about right. It'd be nice if we get this tape primer going. The Maynard primer. Well, how are you putting the sights on there? It's 400. 400. Shooting a foot high. Six inches over the paper and to the left. I was worried for a second I might have hit him because I didn't that recoil was mild. Okay, so now down to two hundred. Shoot two more. There's volume and right for old Snuffy's waist belt. Now, what I didn't tell Private Snuffy, it, what I didn't tell him, is that it might skip up into him because the ground is really wet and soft. Occupational hazard. I saw it. Private Snuffy ricocheted off the ground and went just wide. It, it, it looked like it hit and then went right. Yeah. You might want to dance a little bit though on the next one. <laughs> All right. Last round. Thank you. 
sights want to wander on the 200. I think I skipped it in. Yeah, our private may need a new knee. <laughs> Oops. Well, he'll get a pension, right? Ten dollars a month. I think. Really? You can see it? Yep. Right in the kneecap. <laughs> well, I could see the splash. Splashed, and then I heard the smack. Uh oh, that was Private Snuffy. <laughs> oh well. Well, he's still alive. Man, this is, I love this 1855 rifle. Thank you, Joe, for letting me shoot it. You're very welcome. Ah, so, Private Snuffy has stopped screaming finally. So annoying. It's just a knee. But this is a really long, that is a long way for Civil War battle purposes. But I, as I was seeing them, the ones that were falling short looked to me like they're hitting like right about like in here. And then they skipped up into them. Or maybe they were closer. Do you see any? splashes down here but yeah look at that keyhole yeah poor private snuffy well sorry about that chief how far over did the uh did the ones you say went over by like two feet? About between uh, about, about between about three quarters of a foot and a foot over the top. Yeah. yeah. Was that there? I can't remember if that was there. Okay. So I'm pretty sure this was one of the shots that felt weak to me and it had that strange tracer effect and apparently for some reason that dropped the trajectory. I wonder, that looks pretty round. I don't think that would have skipped in. I wonder if that was one of the 400 yard ones. Yeah. Now I was aiming like, I'm I'm aiming center mass on Private Snuffy. So yeah, yeah maybe, uh, maybe a bad trigger squeeze, but yeah. yeah the uh, the point the, is well made, I think. The one, uh, one of them, I got a clear view and it hit that upper bank way behind the target oh, yeah. up here. Yeah, well, maybe maybe it was one of the 400 yards, or I would think if if it was one of the 200 yard ones that hit the ground, it would have keyhole. I don't think it would have yeah. skipped up and and made a nice round hole. So here's a this is a good shot. You got Joe standing by the that's the 300 yard target. So sight set at 300 yards. Yep. It is no question that we if we wanted to, we could have just shot Private Snuffy to ribbons, but. Uh, we're out here doing a science experiment, so we accidentally sent a ricochet through his kneecap. Sorry about that. We'll get him patched up and uh, he'll be fine. So a quick recap. That is the ricochet that this, this is soggy, muddy ground because I saw water splash when, uh, yeah, it's like a sponge. Oh yeah, look, it is lined up. It is lined up perfectly towards poor Private Snuffy's knee. But, and this, this is good uh, Civil War nerd discussion. The sights are set for 200 yards. At th when the sights are set at 300 yards, they're absolutely clipping that target uh, to the right. You lower it by one notch, you drop it down to 200 yards, and not only are you missing your target, but your your shot is falling would you say that's 50 feet? It's falling 50 free feet in front. Um, now, this can also illustrate 
why commanders so often urge their troops to aim low. If you can skip around in, it doesn't matter if it's a nice clean round hole or if it's a keyhole, you know, Private Snuffy would be out of the fight. More food for our discussion. This is, this is Joe, the lead farmer, tending his crops, but it was worthwhile. So there's the target. There's uh, Private Snuffy. There's where we're shooting from. And Joe actually found the minye that keyholed and uh, smacked old Private Snuffy in the knee. So we will, uh, we will give that to him as a souvenir or if uh, he does not survive the amputation, we'll uh, pass that on to his family. So we're back at the shop and uh, we are trying out some new microphones that might improve the audio because this is the second take <laughs> we have done for this video. The first time just using it off of my phone, uh, the, the audio was not workable. So we've already done this once already, uh, several months ago. Yes. <laughs> but now we yes. have gone into, uh, we have moved into the 20th century with these, these little uh, Amazon microphones. So hopefully that is better than what it used to be. But we're here to talk about the simple demonstration that we shot uh, with the U.S. Model 1855 rifle musket uh, the predecessor to the standard rifle in the American Civil War, just to demonstrate what the trajectory of these rifles were and the kind of the results that we get from this, which was well understood in the 19th century, uh, not so much today, but the results we get from this will be a good benchmark to refer back to with uh, future projects. So we shot Joe's, this is not a reproduction, this is a Model 1855 U.S. rifle musket. What's the date on it? This one, this particular example is a 1857 Harper's Ferry model. Those are the best ones. So, <laughs> yes, this was from the very first production batch of about 3,700 examples made in Harper's Ferry of that year. And the bore is pristine. So to do this experiment the best way possible, we're using an original rifle with a beautiful bore and the original sights, so this rifle at the factory, the sights would have been set to the trajectory of the bullet. So the trajectory was known, the muzzle velocity is about 960 feet per second with the, the standard US style cartridge. So the sights on this are set for that load. A lot of the modern reproduction rifles people struggle with because the sights, I don't think they really spend a lot of time no, they, I think they just slap the sights on the reproduction rifles and, you know, here you go. But this is a military original rifle and everything was done right. So as you've seen in the video, we shot it or Joe shot it um, at 300 yards at the 300 yard target with your sights set at mm -hmm. 300 yards and you clobbered it. Yep. Uh, I'll cut back to that target here just as a reminder. And he put them all in... Uh, I, I would say a two foot group, mm -hmm. like six or seven rounds. I, I don't remember how many you shot. Yep. So this rifle with the correct ammunition. So the, the bullet is not quite accurate, but it's close enough because these are cast bullets. And back in 1859, they were being formed by compression in a split compression die, which doesn't exist today. We can do, we can swage Pritchett bullets, but we can't yet swage the U.S. style bullet with grooves. So we're using a cast version of that, um, but it's the same weight, and we're using Swiss powder, which is the closest that we could get to the excellent powder of the day. So we proved that the sights are on. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were the mm -hmm. the group that Joe shot at 300 yards on that target again with military ammo from a military rifle. Everyone in the 19th century mid 19th century would have been absolutely satisfied with that and this i did set this site for to start this at 300 and it was bang on yep right off right off the start yep. and that is the elevation on the site right where it sits right now that's 300. it's and this experimental archaeology when you recreate everything the way it was and then you go do it and it works exactly the way it worked mm -hmm. it 
it shouldn't surprise us, but for some reason <laughs> it's just I'm like, wow, look at that, it actually worked. Yep. Um, but that's the only reason we could really do this is because that rifle is in such fine yes. condition. I am incredibly jealous. Um, <laughs> well, this will probably be used as evidence in a murder trial. Uh, well, I mean, when I stuck the cat, because I did take that camera and I put the camera down the board to inspect it just to, you know, verify the condition before we used it. It, it was immaculately clean. It, it, I, I could ver I barely verify that it has been fired previously. That which is was absolutely spectacular. It's one of the most beautiful. It, it looks like a brand new uh, rifle barrel. It, yeah. If you had showed me that video and said, yeah, you just bought a brand new Petersoli, I'd go, oh, yeah, that looks nice. Yeah. And this is 160 something odd years old. But it all worked. So the theory mm -hmm. was established that at 300 yards, we can hit the target consistently with the historic ammunition pretty much every time. I mean, you were, you were all right there, nice tight group. Yep. So then, um, and again, if you've seen the, the first half of this video, which I assume you have, <laughs> we start shooting, we set the sights to 200 yards, and then I took over. Uh, shooting standing offhand like a soldier would have but we set Private Snuffy out here, and because this originally was shot several months ago, Private Snuffy was, um, <laughs> he was unscathed <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Since then, he has been the subject of a few more experiments, and his wounds have been appropriately bandaged. Uh, but when we shot this, he was unscathed. He was brand new, literally new out of the box. Mm -hmm. uh, so to demonstrate the trajectory, and that's the difficulty in shooting a rifle musket accurately, is, is accounting for this parabolic trajectory. We set the sights at 200 yards and then put a soldier-sized target out at 300 yards and shot at him. And I don't remember how many rounds we fired, uh, but in theory, and we have this, we spared no expense from the Paper Cartridges LLC <laughs> uh, props department. Uh, they're downstairs. They're also my orphans who make the ammo for me. So they did a pretty good job. So with the sights at 200 yards, knowing the trajectory of the ammunition, the, the sights are set and the ammunition would be set at 200 yards to hit a soldier-sized target at the waist belt. That's what it's calculated to at 200 yards. But the bullet would continue to fall and it would hit the ground at about 260-ish, 270-ish yards. It would not, mathematically, all things perfect, the bullet would not hit a target at 300 yards. And 200 to 300 yards is not very far. No. That's not a lot of distance. So you're going from hitting a guy center mass to completely missing the bullet dropping in front of his feet mm -hmm. at 300 yards. And that... Again, this will be kind of the foundation for future videos to illustrate why the rifle musket was used so ineffectively in the American Civil War. And it's because of this. It's because of this arc trajectory. We knew that that target, we knew Snuffy was stapled to the board exactly at 300 yards. That's a known range. They didn't know that in the 1860s going onto a battlefield. They're, they had to estimate that distance. And it's very tricky to determine 300 to 400 yards, how mm -hmm. far away that is. And the whole purpose of this is just to demonstrate a 100 yard error in range estimation is the difference between a hit and a miss when everything else is working. The rifle is sighted in, the ammunition mm -hmm. is correct, the soldier is a good shot, and they're still inherently going to miss if they don't set the sights uh, exactly right within within 100 yards so we shot it at 200 yards and then we shot it at 400 yards with the sight set uh, at, at each increment and uh, in theory what was supposed to happen is the 200 yard bullets were supposed to hit the ground in front of him and the 400 yard bullets were supposed to sail harmlessly over his head and for the most part that happened although <laughs> oops this we hear civil war officers are constantly telling their soldiers aim low aim low aim low because in the 
heat and excitement of battle, you can possibly skip a bullet in if it hits below, but if it goes over their heads, it's gone. Yep. Uh, so aim low, aim low, aim low, and that's exactly what happened to Snuffy. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> I I saw the little uh, dirt when it I, hit the I, ground. I heard and... it. I heard the smack. Yep. <laughs> So that was one of the 200-yard bullets, but and it they didn't have to amputate his knee though. He's he's okay. no, he's good. Yeah, it's yeah. a flesh wound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's used to it by now. <laughs> 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 and then in uh, and I'll cut back to this, but we are on Baltimore Street in, <laughs> in downtown Gettysburg on a Saturday, so it's even busier than usual. Uh, so they're I don't know if they're going to hear this on these new. Might, yeah. but maybe, maybe not. But the, when we set the sights to 400 yards and fired at them, I, I don't know why, but there was a couple holes at about the level of his head. And again, I'll cut to that. And you can see um, one of them, going back and looking at the target before and after we shot it, there was one new hole. So one of the 400-yard shots actually came in and it missed his head only by about eight or nine inches. So yeah. mathematically, like officially, it wasn't supposed to do that. It was supposed to clear a couple feet over his head. It was supposed to sail right over, uh, going by the mathematical trajectory. So that could have been me. I could have been aiming too low. It could have been you know, shooter error, which ironically mm -hmm. got it closer to the target. <laughs> um, or it could have been any number of things. The bullets we're using are about... 25 grains lighter than the historic bullets and they uh, will therefore move faster so the velocity is a little bit faster so the trajectory might have been a little flatter i don't know that hole wasn't supposed to be there it's yeah. kind of uh defeating the, mm. the the beautiful clean purpose of the experiment was to show there's no holes on snuffy after we shot at him and we ended up with one and almost two yeah <laughs> but the theory is still the same Right? Most of the shots missed. Uh, so even with a rifle, a modern gun in excellent condition, with the sights dead on, the ammunition correct, most of your shots will miss if you don't get the, the distance estimation right. Mm -hmm. But it's still just a pleasure shooting that 55. Yeah. That was definitely beautiful. Beautiful shot, for sure. But we got to get that tape primer working. Yes, that we do. <laughs> that we definitely do. Mm. But I, I will add, though, with the trajectory, because uh, we had a conversation about this not that long ago, talking about you know some of the other misconceptions and theories and things. Looking at, at that trajectory, that just adds to the, the human factor of we know where this is going to go. Mm -hmm. And you still, we still got the one went off and one went a little bit low. I mean, the ricochet effect is something we kind of yeah, know might like happen. a random element yeah. mixed in. Um, but but looking, at, looking at it overall, I mean, consistently, how many rounds went down range that day? Was it 30? Were you somewhere in that round? I don't know. We shot quite a few, but I know we cleaned it too. We did. We did. I, yeah. I struggled with one of the. Yeah. <laughs> I think the barrel got cold. It did. Uh, which is why you should just shoot in filled cartridges. But anyway, <sighs> well, <laughs> couldn't resist. No. Uh, but there's always, especially with these type of rifles. And, and again, in, it, it's well established that in the battlefield conditions, very, very, very few soldiers are calmly and meticulously setting their sights, picking out an individual target, mm -hmm. and then exercising all the shooting fundamentals. Because when, when the, the lead is literally flying, um, that's very, very, very hard to do. So it's the, the action of the, the majority of the mass and... Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the casualties in the Civil War were the ones that Private Snuffy almost got hit with. That's just a, a random element to it. It's just you're sending lead downrange in the general direction. And for all the 
theoretical capability that the rifle musket gives you. In the American Civil War context, it's debatable whether or not a smooth war would have been just as good. Yeah. I mean, especially considering some of the loads that were available for that. You know, this every time you every time you pull that trigger, you're sending one massive piece of lead downrange, which can be very effective in the hands of a properly trained mm -hmm. soldier who's shooting it properly and setting his sights. And and, and you're 100 percent correct. How many soldiers actually did that? I mean, and as you've been talking about yeah, it, it's well established. Very, very, very yeah. few. And I was doing that as as you were going through the different ranges. I was setting, resetting the sights every time. I don't, I'm not sure how well they'll be able to see it in the video, but I showed it in the video. Yeah, confirming but, that the sights are are at the right spot. I mean, but that that's still a huge difference. Yeah, just it, just in your aiming point oh, yeah. of this for 400 yards, and it's simply a a soldier not taking his time and leveling his rifle and it, it gives you a theoretical capability yeah so in theory which was proven at the range mm -hmm. 300 yards in theory when everything is done right you know the range and you set the sights to that range with ammunition that is moving at the correct velocity made for those sights you're going to hit it every single time on that nice clean target range environment uh, and what was lacking from the American Civil War was the intensive soldier training, not only in judging distance, but also in just the, the fundamentals of shooting. Yeah. To be able to do that kind of shooting beyond, beyond what we call like a, the point blank. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, a, it's an extensive, it, it, absolutely immaculate tool. And if it's used as it's intended, its capabilities are, are spectacular. I'm not going to say comparable to, to today's stuff because some of today's well, implements the, are... Oh, yeah, the, the bullets are moving so much faster. Yeah. So you don't... Like on the, the M16 rifle that you know, Specialist Gibbons <laughs> went, uh, you know, was in the Army with, the, the sights on the, on the M16 from 25 meters to 300 meters, which is close enough for yards for you know, essentially all practical purposes, you don't even touch the sights. Mm -hmm. You're, the, the, the bullet moves so fast that from 25 meters, or essentially from the muzzle, all the way out to 300 meters, the bullet only rises and falls a, a matter of inches. Yeah. Whereas with the rifle musket, the, the bullet is, is rising and falling many, many feet, like seven or eight feet. Out, out to 300 yards. Yeah. So a, a soldier, in theory, could stand at 150 yards and you could be firing at a 300-yard target and the bullet's going to fly, again, in theory, mathematically, a mm -hmm. foot over his head. Uh, whereas with the M16, you don't even have to touch the sight. That's the beauty of, of modern high-velocity yeah. smokeless powder rifles is it, it gives you the same capability, but it's, it's almost like shooting a laser pointer. Yeah. That you you know anywhere it touches three hundred yards. Yeah. But this thing it's like shooting a basketball. I mean, and we did prove that with the video because the all except for the one close, mm -hmm. all the other four hundreds went completely over them. Right. At three hundred yards. That could have been me. Yeah. That could have been that could have been a sight picture error. Again, it could have been the bullet I'm using is lighter. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what we should do if we do this again. You go on horse soldier and buy like ten original bullets, like nice original bullets. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and shoot it with originals and see uh, if they do any different. What do you think, Snuffy? Oh, he's he's he's, he's, he's in. Yeah. yeah, he's in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good sport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't tell him about the pension yet, though. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I love that rifle. Oh, I want it. Yeah, it's, but it was definitely, I'd never shot personally for myself. I'd never shot at that, that distance uh, with something like this. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if we have any video footage of it, but seeing trajectory with light behind when the sun was behind us, actually seeing 
the bullet arc it, down yeah, range. Yeah, we did catch some. Uh, this thing was shooting tracers for some reason. <laughs> I I don't know why. I have no. I would love to try to replicate that because it was just so cool. Yeah. And you can see where the bullet's going. Yeah. That was the best part. And you can see. Not only do you see the bullet spinning, mm -hmm. leaving the smoke trail as it goes down, but you can also clearly watch the bullet going up and then coming down yeah. uh, on its trajectory. So it is, uh, it's visualized. Yeah. Yeah, that was very, that was very neat to see. I was uh, just thinking about the sight picture on it too, looking at the 300 yards, because we were looking at a full human-sized target. Mm -hmm. You have it's a very difficult time stand, like stand, walking back from the target, turn around and look at it. it it's pretty uh, yeah, three hundred yards. It, that's out there, it's, and and the front sight post takes up most of the figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but in eighteen sixty, a hit was a hit. They they didn't care whether you knocked his hat off or you blew the heel off of his shoe. A mm -hmm. hit is a hit anywhere on there. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah, good enough for government work, as they say. Good enough, it still works today. Yeah. It's, it works beautifully today. Yeah, yeah, perfect bore, and it, and again, it just works beautifully with yeah. the, with the correct ammo. The sights line up, and I'm at, at this. It's so much fun. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'm the only nerd that just finds that so uh, fascinating to get the same results that they were getting 160 plus years ago. Yeah, today. And, and it, it confirms we're doing it right. That's yes. what it means. That, yeah, we're, we're on the right path. So, Yeah, well, that's Civil War trajectory uh, mm -hmm. of, a, of a rifle musket. And again, this is we're making this video as somewhat of a reference point, a little bit more of a deep dive into, into the actual mechanics of the trajectory with a, a visual demonstration of it with, the, again, the soldier-sized target. So in future videos, when we talk about the trajectory, Instead of sitting here and having this long conversation again, I can just say, hey, go back if you want more info. If you want the proof, the established quasi-scientific proof, go back and watch our video on, uh, on the trajectory and, and you'll see the proof that, yeah, you mis misestimate the distance by 100 yards. You're just 100 yards off. That's the difference between hitting them all day or missing them all day. Yeah. And it's always fun to shoot your rifle. Yeah, this was this was an enjoyable. We got to do it again. We got to shoot it more. Yeah. Cool. Range is open right now. What time is it? Twelve o'clock. Oh, let's go. Cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. I would like to go shoot something. <laughs>